Hi, I'm Chad Bettis, author of The Disciple Making Parent, and this is my audio blog where I read some of my blog posts in audio format for your convenience. In today's episode, I'm going to be asking the question, should you let the sun go down on your anger? Ephesians 4.26 reads, In your anger do not sin, and do not let the sun go down on your anger. It's a foundational verse on handling anger. And I'm convinced that for years, I misapplied this verse to the detriment of my marriage. What exactly does this verse mean, and how should it be applied in marriage? For many years, early in our marriage, Sharon and I tried to apply that verse literally. We had the normal adjustments of newly married couples, and in addition, both of us have intense personalities. As a result, we've had numerous times of quote-unquote intense fellowship. In fact, we probably had those times more than most couples. And often a disagreement would carry on as the evening grew late. The more we tried to, quote, resolve our disagreement, the further we were to resolution. We were trying to not go to bed in our anger, and it wasn't working. Our basic impulse was in the right direction based on human nature. If a couple has a disagreement and the relationship is tense, it's easy just to go to bed. One party sleeps on the couch or they coldly sleep with their backs to each other. And the next morning, the issue is not resolved. In our minds, we're still arguing with the other person. We're rehashing the hurt and the argument over and over. And with no attempt at resolution, conflicts can simmer for days. A cold or hot anger has settled over the house. Well, given this natural working of human nature, God's gracious command makes sense. He is saying, keep short accounts. Don't let issues go unresolved. As a result of this understanding, Sharon and I tried to resolve each issue before we went to bed. We were thinking of this verse as, do not let the sun go down on the anger that is in your relationship. Resolve it. But for anyone who has ever tried to think straight after 10 p.m., the results are not helpful. I'm now convinced that our practice, while sincere, was based on a faulty understanding of this verse. A more wise application would be to understand this verse in a different manner. Now, I would argue that I don't need to resolve the issue that we were fighting about before bed. However, I do need to resolve my own anger. Resolving the issue and the subsequent sinful words takes two people and may or may not happen. But letting go of my own anger in forgiveness involves one person, and that's me. When applied this way, it's a command for me to control the only piece of real estate that I can control, my heart. It's a command to acknowledge the disagreement and the anger and ask the Lord to resolve it. Now I have a command to move from sinful anger to unconditional love. It's a chance for me to pray for good for a person I'm at odds with at the moment. It's a chance for me to acknowledge to the Lord how much I feel hurt by this person and then pray, Father, forgive them. It's a chance for me to ask the Lord to show me the log in my own eye, Matthew 7, 3-5. It's a chance to pray that I would glorify God through the conflict, 1 Corinthians 10, 31. It's a chance to grow in unconditional love. I can pray, help me forgive as you have forgiven me. Help me pursue this one that I'm disagreeing with, but help me pursue him or her with the unconditional love you have shown me. In addition, it's a chance to spur me to action to resolve the issue at the appropriate time. What this means is that no, you don't have to resolve the issue you're arguing about that night But it does mean that you'll resolve the upset before going to bed. You will sleep with a peaceful heart, having entrusted the issue to the one who never sleeps. You can say something like this. This really upsets us right now, but I know we'll figure it out. I love you. Let's set up a time when we have plenty of space for me to hear you out and you to hear me out. Not going to sleep on your anger is a wise command from a loving father. And it may mean you resolve the issue before you go to bed, or it may mean you wait until another time to talk about it when both of you are fresh. But what it does mean is that you don't go to bed with a heart full of anger. 
Your sleep is immersed in your own repentance, confession, unconditional love, and forgiveness. And that is a good way to fall asleep. Well, thank you for listening to the Disciple Making Parent audio blog. This material comes directly from my five-week video-driven Bible study, Parenting with Patience, Overcoming Anger in the Home. It's the lessons the Lord taught me personally so I might grow in this area. You can find more information on our website or at ParentingWithPatienceStudy.com. Thanks for listening. Thank you.